Hello everybody, this is Brandon with uh, Center for Excellence in Teaching at Laramie County Community College. We're going to look at uh, the Respondus Lockdown Browser. Um, so I know um, that some folks uh, were actually expecting on the homepage in uh, the student or the faculty resources to see um, some Respondus stuff in there. Now you see we do have a quick start guide in here uh, for both uh, faculty and for students, um, but the process changed at the beginning of uh, the fall 2016 semester so um, we've had it this way for about a year now um, but some folks uh, I've recognized may still be having some issues um, so I want to make sure that uh, we update the workflow for everyone so that we're all on the same page um, <clears throat> so I've gone into my course I'm gonna go to a quiz um, you can see that I've got um, a, a RLDB is Respondus Lockdown Browser. Um, it's a quiz that has a password attached to it. I can even uh, get rid of that password if I want to by editing the quiz, going into restrictions, and pulling that password off of there. Um, so at this point, we've got a basic quiz. Mine is set to always available. Um, we're not really going to go into quiz setup here. Uh, we're just going to look at the lockdown browser once you've got it done. So uh, let me get my screen a little bit bigger here so everybody can see. Um, so you can see my quiz is down here. Uh, you see a lockdown browser tab up on uh, the right here. So um, when you already have your quiz created, you've got your dates and all of that set up. Um, we can go in here to the lockdown browser. And I know that uh, it's going to get mad at me, but I want to show you um, how it works. It might be upset because I'm recording my screen, um, but that's okay. We'll, we'll see how it works out. So um, in here, you're going to see the Lockdown Browser tab. Uh, it pulls up uh, the Respondus dashboard. Now, if you have courses that previously, uh, or quizzes from a previous course, pardon me, that have uh, Lockdown Browser enabled on them, you have to go into the Lockdown Browser tab at least once. Um, now you can verify the settings, which I highly recommend, um, but all you have to do is click that Lockdown Browser tab. It'll take a few seconds and it'll update your settings to make sure that everything is applied the correct way. Um, now, when we were in the Manage Quizzes tab, which is where you start, you see there's nothing here, just the title of the quiz, okay? Uh, if I go into the Lockdown Browser, <clears throat> you'll see the list of any quizzes in your course. For mine, it's just that one. Um, if I click the drop down arrow on the left hand side of the quiz name, you'll see modify settings. We want to click on that and it's going to bring up uh, the lockdown browser settings area. So the default is don't require lockdown browser. Uh, if you're using lockdown browser or you're going to require your students to, I should say, uh, click the radio button next to uh, require respondus lockdown browser. Now if you've set up what are called submission views, uh, which means your students can go back and review the quiz either to see the right answers or the questions they got wrong, anything like that. You have choices. Um, and if you don't know what submission views are, uh, contact the CET uh, and we'll let you know. I'll, I'll give you contact information at the end of the video. Um, the second default here, once you turn on Lockdown Browser, is to require Lockdown Browser to view that feedback and the results. So those submission views are going to require students to, again, start Lockdown Browser, uh, log in, and look at those submission views for that quiz. Now, we'll take a look at how easy that is for students um, in just a second after we set this up. So uh, generally, if you're requiring Lockdown Browser for your quiz, uh, you're going to require students to uh, use it to view the results or the feedback of that, but you don't have to. You can uncheck that. If you want to add a password to your exam, which is completely optional, you can type it in here. Um, if you're using Lockdown Browser for um, students who are um, remote, uh, using a password doesn't really matter all that much. Um, you will have to tell them what that password is. Uh, so you can offer this quiz to folks uh, who are remote, uh, maybe in a face-to-face -face class, and still use the Lockdown Browser by providing uh, a password here. Now everybody has to know this password in order to log into the exam. Once we go from there, I always uh, expand, so click that plus button to expand the advanced settings, and there's a lot of different settings in here. We're going to go from uh, top to bottom here. And we're not going to go over all of them, but you'll see that there's these little explain links uh, that if I put my mouse over it, it's going to give me uh, an explanation of what this does. So I can just leave my mouse there, read that, uh, and 
and that's perfectly fine. So the first option is lock students into the browser until the exam is completed. That means that students, they cannot exit and re-enter the exam. Uh, once they try to exit the exam, uh, they will be forced to submit that exam. Now, uh, this sounds like a good setting. Unfortunately, it can cause problems. So if you have uh, students, even in, say, a classroom in a proctored environment, who uh, their laptop stops working or their uh, wireless goes down. They can't continue uh, the quiz in D2L um, if, if their wireless goes out. So they'll have to go uh, back to activities, quizzes, and go back into the quiz and relaunch Lockdown Browser. But if you choose this option, they're not allowed to do that. It's going to force them to submit, uh, and then you're going to have to go in on the back, de back end, remove that attempt, and allow them to get in again. So um, use this first one at your, uh, at, at your own risk. Um, I would say that most times this is not necessary um, to ensure that the browser has been locked down for most students. You can also allow them to um, take the exam with an iPad. There is a Respondus Lockdown Browser app uh, for iOS. Um, you don't necessarily have to do that, but if you have students with iPads, they may want to go that route. Uh, you can also allow them access to specific uh, websites. So, uh, you know, for instance, if I wanted them to be able to access Google, I can type google.com in there, uh, put a comma in between, uh, and then uh, maybe I want them to access Wolfram Alpha. Um, you can set that up if you want to. Uh, if you don't, just leave that unchecked. Now, some folks like to allow a calculator. A standard calculator is very similar to uh, the Windows calculator with just minimal uh, standard stuff on here. Uh, and a scientific is going to be much closer to um, what you see on a scientific calculator. Note that this is not the calculator. It's just the Windows calculator. Uh, but um, that is an option that you can provide to your students. If you don't want it, uncheck it. If you want to enable printing from the toolbar, uh, you can enable that as well. Most folks leave these, all of these unchecked, um, and that's perfectly fine as well. We're not going to cover monitor. Uh, we don't have uh, a site-wide license for monitor. Um, we do have a limited amount of seats. If you're interested in that, uh, you can let us know. But the lockdown browser uh, is... Uh, just the browser locks it down doesn't let them open new tabs all that kind of stuff monitor is more webcam stuff if you're doing remote proctoring I highly advise that you contact uh, the CET here and uh, talk to us about Proctorio which is our remote proctoring solution once you've set everything up the way you want it to be you can go ahead and do save and close it's going to bring you back um, I'm a little impatient so I know that it's done here I'm going to go over to manage quizzes and you can see now, RLDB was the name of the quiz. It adds on requires lock, uh, Respondus Lockdown Browser, and it put that password on there that we had as well. Uh, so now we can actually go in here as a student uh, and, and take this quiz. Okay, so I'm in as a student. You can see that I'm in as a, a fake student here in my class. We're looking at that same quiz. Um, so if I click in uh, to the quiz to take it, it's going to give me the current time, all the normal stuff D12 does. Um, if we keep scrolling down, it does have a quiz requirements section now, and it says you must use the Respondus Lockdown Browser to take this quiz. Now, if somebody has never, a learner has never downloaded Lockdown Browser, there's a link right here that they can do it. Um, I have before. Mine was outdated, uh, but even if you do have an outdated version of the Lockdown Browser on your computer, you can still click Launch Lockdown Browser. Um, it's going to give me a couple things here. So I'm in Chrome, and it says, are you sure you want to open the Lockdown Browser? I'm going to say yes. Uh, and then it, it, you, you can't see it, um, but it's over on, on my other screen over here. It says it's downloading an update. It's going to sit there. It's going to install that update at the Lockdown Browser. Um, and go through. It's going to take just a minute here, so we can go in here. Um, so I need an update. It's going to ask if I want to reinstall. I can say yes, and now it says, hey, maintenance is complete. I can click finish, and if it doesn't launch the lockdown browser, that's okay. Uh, so it says, if make sure you have the latest version installed and try launching again. We can say done. Let's try one more time. We'll launch the lockdown browser, um, and it's going to open up on both of my screens. Um, because I have a dual screen set up. Now I can go in here, I can enter my password, and I can start the quiz. It tells me that it's going to take a few seconds to load. Um, once I'm done here, 
Um, it'll load up. Uh, I don't have any questions in this quiz, so I'll just go ahead and submit it. Yes, submit the quiz. And done. And so now I can click Exit Lockdown Browser. And now we're done. You can see it's closing. It brings me back into D12 where I started. And now I can click Done.